It's kind of funny that after all these years of visiting Las Vegas that we are just now finding out that the surrounding area is home to some seriously epic hikes. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, this hike is hard, but if you are up to the challenge, it is well worth it. You can make this hike just over 5 miles if you hike all the way down to the Colorado River. If you're wanting to attempt this hike, you need to get there early, because we did and as you can see in the video, we barely found a parking spot in the small parking lot. Another thing that you need to be aware of is that you're going during the right time of year. This trail is closed between May 15th and September 30th due to the extreme heat. This trail is already challenging enough in pleasant temperatures, I can't even imagine thinking about doing it in the summer heat. There are a couple of things that you're going to want to bring on this hike to make your life a whole lot easier. I think it goes without saying that you need to bring plenty of water and shoes that will give you a ton of traction. You are going to be scaling a lot of rocks over the course of this hike and good traction is absolutely critical. In addition to that, we highly recommend bringing water shoes, swimsuits, snacks, either a plastic bag or a dry bag to keep everything dry, and you might want to bring gloves to help you get a little bit of extra grip on all of the ropes. We didn't end up using the gloves over the 9 ropes that we encountered this day, but some people might find them helpful. Because of all of the ropes and down climbs, we probably would not recommend that you bring your four-legged friends on this hike. For quite a while at the beginning of this hike, you're just going to be navigating your way down sandy washes, and you're going to be wondering why this has a hard rating. But don't worry, the tough part will be here soon enough. A good amount of this hike is also in a very soft gravel, which takes a little bit more effort to walk through. So even though this hike isn't super long, between the climbing and the gravel, it was pretty tiring. Since certain sections of this hike are a slot canyon, it is very important to check the weather before you go. If there is any rain even in the surrounding areas, I would not attempt this hike because you're risking potentially being caught up in a flash flood. As soon as you pass through these large curved walls, the trail's difficulty is going to start to increase. At first, we thought that we were going to have to down climb this pretty sizable drop. It looked pretty sketchy and we weren't exactly sure how we were going to do it, but then we noticed that there was an arrow pointed on a nearby rock. There are going to be a ton of arrows over the course of this hike that tell you which way to go. You just need to be sure to keep your eyes peeled for them. In addition to the ropes, this trail does have a ton of rock scrambling and small down climbs. We were actually pretty glad for the soft gravel at this point because there are a couple small ledges that you have to jump off and it's much softer than landing on hard packed dirt. After a couple more down climbs, you're going to be diving right back into a deep slot canyon. Not only is this hike unique, but it is actually really beautiful as well. I'm not exactly sure how high the walls are at this point, but they were towering over us, and this is why I gave you the flash flood warning earlier. At right around the one and a half mile mark, you should be encountering the first of the nine ropes that we encountered this day. This one is fairly simple and there are steps carved into the rock to help you get up and down. As a small word of warning, you may want to test out the ropes before blindly trusting and putting your full body weight on them. We don't know who put the ropes here or how long they've been here and I'm sure they've been baking in the desert sun. After rope 1 you are a short 3 tenths of a mile walk to rope 2. It was at the top of this drop where we ran into a couple of locals. They told us this rope did not exist the last time they did this hike. Even though this one doesn't go down a sketchy vertical drop, it does make its way down a very smooth and slippery granite slab. The good thing is that there is a bypass if you don't feel like attempting it. To show just how slippery it is, here's our new buddy Wade taking the express route down. After rope 2 you're going to spend some time scrambling over and around boulders as you make your way down the sometimes narrow slot canyon. We really cannot stress enough that you need to attempt this hike on days with cooler temperatures. Once you are down in the canyon, the temperatures can be between 10 to 20 degrees hotter than they are at the trailhead and I'm sure that's caught people off guard in the past. And here we are at rope number 3. At the time we went, it was anchored on the left side of the canyon. You will begin this rope by climbing over a large boulder onto a chalk stone. At this point you can use the rope to lower yourself the rest of the way down. This one wasn't super tricky for me, but it can have a little bit of an extra challenge for shorter adventurers. One thing that you need to keep in mind is that this is an out and back trail, so every rope that you are going down, you're going to have to go back up at some point. In several cases, the way back up was more challenging, so please be sure to know your limits. 
This is also why you want to bring a second pair of shoes so you can keep the shoes that you're going to be using to climb back up dry. Otherwise, it's going to be very slippery. This brings us to rope number four and it is one of the more tricky ones. We had to help each other get down so unfortunately we didn't get any video of it. Once we got down it was a short walk until we could start to smell sulfur and we knew we were getting close. And sure enough there was the first signs of hot springs. Once you see the spring you have officially arrived at the upper gold strike hot spring pools. We actually found a really nice sized pool on the left side of the canyon just after we passed the pipe that you saw just a second ago. As with any hot spring, you're going to want to test the water before you decide to get in. This is nature and obviously the temperature of the water is not regulated. Hot springs can easily reach boiling temperatures. The upper springs was a really nice place to relax and hang out at for a bit, but we wanted to see what else this canyon had to offer, so soon enough we were back on the trail. You are going to be encountering water for pretty much the rest of the trail, but we were avoiding switching out our hiking shoes for water shoes just yet. We knew that we had five ropes left to go and we were hoping to get as much traction as we could for as long as we could. Rope 5 led you down a granite slab that was pretty tall, but this was actually one of the more simple ropes. One more thing that you need to know about the hot springs is that you never want to dive, splash water in your face or anyone else's face, or submerge your head underwater. These hot springs are known to contain a deadly amoeba. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, but I'm going to put its name at the bottom of the screen. We still had four ropes to go before we hit the main hot springs and the Colorado River. We were encountering more down climbs and water. Luckily someone had placed stepping stones in the streams that allowed us to hop across and keep our main shoes dry. Soon we were at rope number six which appeared to be quite professionally done. It was bolted to the rock with a heavy chain and the rope appeared to be in pretty good condition. The drop is only about three or four feet and ends up with you touching down on top of a pile of boulders. Almost as soon as we finished rope 6 we turned around and we were a little bit confused because it didn't look like there was a safe way to continue on. Luckily there was a hiker on their way out that pointed us to a small tunnel on the right side of the trail. This is kind of a unique part of the trail and I think it's one of my favorite parts of this entire hike. Not too far down the trail from the cave is rope 7. This is another fairly short drop but you need to not be overconfident. If your shoes are wet this one can be very slippery. At this point we only have two ropes to go and soon enough we were at rope number eight. This one drops you down about five or six feet and when we went there was a lot of water at the bottom. There was also a lot of water on the face of the rock from people that have gone back up so it was pretty slippery. Soon after that we hit rope nine which is the last rope on the way down and as you can see it's also tricky. It has a drop of about 10 to 12 feet and I'm not gonna lie it's pretty intimidating. But after that you can take a deep breath and know that the hard part is over until it's time to go back anyways. There is some rock scrambling and walking in slippery waterways, but everything is going to be pretty much easy compared to what you've been through. When we got to the first set of springs, the people were super nice and they told us that the main springs and the Colorado River were not too far around the corner. We decided that this was probably the point where we should switch into our water shoes because it looked like there wasn't a whole lot of dry trail ahead of us. This part of the hike is really beautiful and you have springs pouring directly out of the cliff walls like waterfalls. It was really nice having our water shoes at this point because instead of rock hopping we could just walk directly through the streams. And here we are at the main gold strike hot springs complete with its own hot waterfall. When we first got there there were quite a few people and we didn't want to overcrowd the springs so we hung a left and headed down to check out the Colorado River first. If you've made it this far, it's worth checking out. It's not a very long walk and there's only a couple of small down climbs along the way. You will be rewarded for this extra effort with not only a nice view of the Colorado River, but also with a unique view of the Mike O'Callaghan and Pads Hillman Memorial Bridge, which is the bridge that is directly in front of the Hoover Dam. Unfortunately, you cannot see the Hoover Dam from here because it is just around the corner. It was pretty fun walking out into the Colorado River because you have the water coming from the springs which is still pretty warm meeting the cold water of the Colorado. You can definitely feel the temperature shift the farther that you go out. The water was pretty cold when we went but there were a couple small six and seven foot miniature cliff jumps that you can do if you go on a warmer day. After enjoying the refreshing water for a bit we decided to head back upstream and see if there was any room for us in the springs. Luckily for us there was plenty of room, but you do have to be careful when you get into the springs because the ground can be pretty slippery as you see here. The water was pretty hot that day, but it was actually quite pleasant. It was nice to sit there and relax and enjoy the view down the canyon. We even got to enjoy a mini pool that had its own waterfall. 
At this point we were well into the afternoon and we wanted to make sure since this is such a unique and tricky trail that we got back before sunset. Usually out and back trails are pretty self-explanatory. You walk out and you walk back, but this one is actually a little bit more challenging on the way back. The way back is going to require some upper body strength and the shoes that you have hopefully kept dry. But for now, you're gonna to wanna to stay in your water shoes as you walk upstream. When we got to the upper springs, it was empty. This is also a really nice place to hang out if you can. But it was short lived and soon we were back on the trail again. I'm not sure why, but this entire trip, V and I had a really bad habit of hitting our heads on things. So be careful when you go through these smaller tunnels. After working our way up the canyon for a bit, it was time to switch back to our dry shoes cause we were once again at rope number nine. This one is really tricky and when we got there, there was a group ahead of us that was really struggling with it. Not only is this one pretty high, but the rocks at the bottom make it to where you definitely do not want to fall off of this one. Some of the other ropes do have awkward elements to them, but I think that number 9 is probably one of the trickiest, so it's nice to have it out of the way first. Speaking of awkward, rope 8 had this strange overhang to it. There was another rope off to the right, but it was in the water, so we wanted to keep our shoes dry. Rope 7 is fairly straightforward and V flew up it before I could even get the camera on. It is quite smooth, but if you have shoes with good traction, it shouldn't give you any trouble. After making our way through the cave, it was back to rope 6, which also was quite simple. Obviously, this is the condensed version of the hike back, since we've already watched the video of the hike out. I mainly want to showcase the technical sections and climbs that you'll be facing on the way back. V flew up rope 5 like a superhero again before I could even get the camera on. Besides being smooth, this one should give you no problems. At this point, you only have four more ropes and a lot of rock scrambling left to go. I feel pretty confident in saying that the hardest parts are behind you, but don't get overconfident because that's when you mess up and get hurt. Even though rope four is only about six feet tall, it is very smooth. You may need to give some people in your group a boost, but V is a beast and she wanted to do it herself. One thing you need to be sure to do is to lower the rope back down after you've climbed up. Climbs like rope three here would be really tricky if you didn't have the rope to help you. So be sure to practice good rope etiquette and make sure that it is all the way down before you move on to the next one. We are quickly approaching rope number two. That is the one that had the big slide on it. Don't forget that this one does have the bypass. I just felt like taking the harder route. Even with this being the harder route, it wasn't all that challenging and it was actually pretty fun. V on the other hand was not feeling it so she decided that she was gonna take the bypass. You now only have one rope to go, and even though it is pretty tall, this is one of the easiest ones in the canyon. It probably would be tricky if it wasn't for the fact that someone went out and actually chiseled steps into the wall. One word of warning when you're navigating all of these ropes and down climbs in this canyon is to please be careful. It may look like a fairly simple jump down, but remember, you are in the middle of nowhere, and if you sprain or break your ankle, it's going to be really hard to get help. This is also why we recommend bringing a tracker like a Garmin InReach so you can send out a beacon if you need help. This is a very popular trail so it's not like no one is going to find you, but even if they do find you, they're going to have a heck of a time getting you out. So please be careful. We want to inspire people to adventure, but we want them to do it in the safest way possible. All of the unique challenges of this hike make it really fun, and they are also the reason why this has earned itself a spot in our top 10 favorite hikes. And if all the hot springs and ropes weren't fun enough, we had a bighorn sheep sighting right before we got back to the car to cap off our day. And that is going to do it for our hike to the Gold Strike Hot Springs. After seeing hikes like this and the historic railroad hiking trail, we want to do more hiking in Nevada. Let us know some cool trails in the comments below. If you enjoy our adventures, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we make new videos. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official. And for all the information about this hike and other awesome things to do in Nevada, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.